across the top. My fingers, it's a bit rough, rough and ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my Magic Morse Box. Now this wonderful device obviously can send you Morse code to practice. It's got a 9 volt battery in it so you can take it on the go. Uh, it does say here, don't connect external DC power while the battery switch is on because otherwise you're putting 12 volts into the battery and it's a 9 volt battery, it's not going to like it very much, it'll probably explode. Uh, if we go over to the right, we're going to get letters only, as you can hear. It also displays the letter on here with the dots and dashes and the speed and it scrolls across the top what you're actually supposed to be receiving. If we go to the middle, it's going to give us numbers, letters and symbols as well. There you go, there's a comma and a slash. And over to the left, we're going to go to numbers only. The volume over here. And we can control the speed up to, believe it or not, 35 words per minute. Which is damn fast. Too fast for me. I really like to rag to at about 17 words per minute. That's a nice speed to go at. So there you have it, folks. If you want to find out how I built this and who's responsible for this wonderful design and all that good stuff, stick around. Not many people actually subscribe to this channel, so if you'd like to be kept abreast of what's happening on the channel, reach down, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, like it's a Morse key. Let's get back to the project. Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. This is going to be quite a short one. Back in the day when I was at the Australian Maritime College becoming a radio officer, I had to learn Morse code. And believe it or not, I actually got to use it for a very short period of time on the Australian coast. So if you want to see the trials and tribulations and hear a little bit about my story as a ship's radio officer, go to the description below this video and I'll have a couple of links that uh, share those wonderful halcyon days of uh, the sparks on ships, which unfortunately no longer happens. Whilst I was at the Australian Maritime College, I had to learn Morse to 20 words per minute. And we were given a device that at the time was very, very high tech. And it would play random four uh, figure groups of code. It could be um, letters, numbers, or a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. And you had little switches that you could switch to get it to do that. And I really miss that little device. It was a fantastic aid to study. Now, I'm going to say this straight up. If you want to get good at a CW, you should do a combination of listening to machine sent code. You should definitely get on, on the air as quickly as you can, even if you're very, very slow, and listen to hand sent Morse because everybody has their little uh, accent or their fist, as they like to say, in the trade. And it's really good to get used to those nuances and those differences and, of course, um, battle with the uh, fading QSB on, 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 it, on the air and all that sort of great stuff. But certainly... Uh, the convenience factor and getting yourself up to speed and getting familiar with the characters is probably easy to do via one of the uh, apps or online or uh, computer sent Morse code. But that little black box, I was pining for it. And uh, so here you have it, folks. This is my magic Morse code box. And I'll have to give credit where credit's due. So I will show you right now uh, where I found this wonderful design. Uh, and I will, I will definitely put links below in the description uh, where to find the information. I'll also point out a few things on the sketch that comes with this that some of the newer players uh, with Arduino might stumble upon because the gentleman who put this code up assumed you had a certain amount of knowledge of Arduino and you might get a little bit lost, kind of like I did. Okay, folks, uh, this is all the parts we're going to need or most of them. Uh, it's not a very complex project, I am hoping. I'm going to be building it on a little bit of a Vero board. Now, Vero board's a great thing to build on. It's uh, very versatile, and it's usually good for fast prototyping. Uh, we've got some 10K resistors, and a whole lot of bits and bobs in this uh, packet here. There is a 100K potentiometer that's going to be going in. Our little piezoelectric buzzer. 
This is the 9 volt 3 pin regulator that uh, will help us run our uh, bits and pieces that we need to run. The uh, Arduino Nano, which is the brains for the operation. I have a couple of uh, electrolytic capacitors that are 220 microfarad, just to provide a little bit of filtering. Couple of switches, single pole double throw. Two of those. And our screen. And that is the, uh, the lot. Now, I will tell you the actual circuit diagram, but uh, I don't want to steal this design. It's not my design. So I will put links below to where I got all this information to the great uh, resources that uh, made this project happen. And you will be able to do as I do. So you know me, folks. Uh, credit where credit must be given. And this is the site where I first discovered this project. Uh, the gentleman that's done this is he's a modeler. He doesn't give his name on the site. Um, the site just named Leap Number 567. And Leap Number 567 appears to do a lot of modeling and play with Arduino. I think he's into model aircraft and electronics. And his contribution to this project, of course, is giving it uh, a lot more uh, promotion. And it says here, his contribution is a switch to select between all characters alpha only or numbers only display the actual dit da representation on the screen now of course your purists would not like the dit da being shown because uh, morse is an audio language but i think it's a great feature to have it on the screen and of course morse can be sent in other ways too so i think uh, that's uh, really splitting hairs when people start, start arguing about it but you really do need to think about morse as a an audio thing in a dit and a da rather than a dot and a dash but um, I love that feature on the screen. I think it's a great feature. And the ability to switch between the different modes is also a fantastic addition to uh, this device. It makes it a lot more functional. So thank you so much for putting this up. And of course, he also does give uh, credit where credit was due. Uh, down the bottom here, the original code by Eric Linda, Sierra Mike Zero, Romeo Victor Victor, and Mark van der Wettering, Kilo 6 Hotel X-Ray. Uh, that is um, the people that have done the original encoding. And I think the original project, if you scale right to the top, um, it's a Glenn Popeil. So we must not forget Glenn because um, this is his project. Kilo Whiskey 5 Golf Papa. So I hope I've given everybody their dues. Um, I will now quickly jump over on the code and just quickly discuss some of the things that might make you come unstuck because the actual circuit itself is a really simple one. I've added volume control. I've added headphones. I've added various things. Um, I will leave that up to you to decide how to do that. But if you really get stuck, um, drop me a comment below and I will give you a hand with it. So this is the actual sketch of the random code uh, practice. You gotta make sure obviously you include these libraries, that's fairly obvious. Where you can come unstuck is with the liquid crystal display. Now in the actual code that he provides, he says address here and rows and columns. And of course, I didn't um, remember having done that in the past and eventually it came back to me. So you need to put an address there. Now you can get programs to scan for the address, but certain parts quite often have the same address. So you might have to look at, up how to find the address of an LCD screen if you don't have the address, or if it's a 16 by two standard one, you quite often find it zero by 27, and we've got uh, 16 columns and, um, and two rows. Further down, the other thing that I had problems with was um, you, I needed to put an LCD beginning here to get it to start, otherwise the screen did not work. And I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that's uh, marked up. I think the address needed to be put in somewhere else as well. Yes, the second place is up here. I think it's constant integers it stands for. Don't ask me, but um, constant int LCD address is 0 by 27. So I2C LCD address. So you need to make sure the address goes in there. That's at line 33. And then further down um, in line 49, liquid crystal I2C type display. 
LCD, zero times 27 is the address, 16 columns, two rows. Okay, so, well, here goes nothing. We'll uh, go battery power to start with this. We'll plug into 12 volts as well. And I have wired this up such that I have to be very careful not to uh, plug in the 12 volts when the battery's plugged in because we'll have 12 volts across the battery. But uh, that will be the least of our worries. Let's see if it actually works. Hey. Well, another night at the uh, test bench, and we had some problems. I was not happy with the sound that was coming out of this thing. It was very tinny, and that's probably to be expected if you're using one of these piezoelectric buzzers. It is a lot smaller than a speaker, but not that much smaller. So I have replaced uh, the piezoelectric with the speaker, and I was worried it might not work. I was worried that the piezo is what's generating the tone, and we're just switching it on and off. But it is actually um, using a tone, the Arduino. So it is working. We have a speaker now. I've went and got a center off toggle switch, which I didn't have. I had a double pole, double throw, but it wasn't center off. And I also realized I'd missed one of the wires that runs back to the Arduino. And that's why it was randomly moving from uh, numerals to letters to both and, and symbols as well. So we had some fault finding to do as well. I've also added a volume control and uh, I've given the provision for headphones which cuts the speaker off so you can listen quietly and not annoy the people around you it runs off a 12 volt supply and i've also had the uh provision for an on off switch which is uh over here and the on off switch will allow me to switch the battery on and off and i've just got to make sure that i don't operate uh the power supply when i've got the uh, battery connected oh i'm going to cause some problems but uh i may make a note of that on the outside of the case as well in case this ever gets inherited by anyone. Okay, so we've got it in a case and, uh, you know, super glue all over our fingers. It's a little bit rough and ready. Fred Flintstone style construction. Uh, I am going to put some labels on and whatnot. It's running on batteries at the moment on a single nine volt. And we're going to, uh, yeah, double-sided tape the circuit board down. And we've got our uh, outlet for our headphones. And we do know that uh, just in case you don't believe me, that uh, when we uh, when we plug our headphones in, I'll just put the uh, microphone down. There you have it. So fun little project. Hi folks, thanks for sticking around right to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the Magic Morse Box and I hope you give it a crack. You're probably not going to see me around for a little while now. I am off to Germany. I'm off to Prague and Austria and first time in Europe for me, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, I probably won't have much time to get the videos up. I might get some shorts up if I see anything interesting that's vaguely engineering or radio-like. Um, I may even take magic morse box with me if i've got room in my bag although i thinking my wife might um think that uh we might be overpacking if i take this thing and it might distract me a little bit from what i'm supposed to be doing which is having a holiday away from radio for a little while but i will be back folks and i am going to come back with a vengeance hopefully to finish off that uh soda monster rig and maybe get it activated in the field so 73 from the Art of Engineering, and I will see you in the next episode, hopefully soon.